There was once upon a time a man who was about to set out on a long journey and on parting he asked his three daughters what he should bring back with him for them. Whereupon the eldest wished for pearls, the second wished for diamonds, but the third said, Dear father, I should like a singing soaring lark. The father said, Yes, if I can get it, you shall have it. Kissed all three and set out. Now when the time had come for him to be on his way home again, he had brought pearls and diamonds for the two eldest, but he had sought everywhere in vain for a singing soaring lark for the youngest, and he was very unhappy about it, for she was his favourite child. Then his road lay through a forest, and in the midst of it he saw a splendid castle, and near the castle stood a tree. But quite on top of the tree, he saw his singing, soaring lark. Aha! You come just at the right moment, he said, quite delighted, and called to his servant to climb up and catch the little creature. But as he approached the tree, a lion leapt from beneath, leaf it shook himself and roared till the leaves on the trees trembled. He who tries to steal my singing soaring lark, he cried, I will devour. Then the man said, I did not know that bird belonged to thee. I will make amends for the wrong I have done and ransom myself with a large sum of money only spare my life. The lion said, Nothing can save thee unless thou wilt promise to give me for mine own what first meets thee on thy return home. And if thou wilt do that, I will grant thee thy life, and thou shalt have the bird for thy daughter into the bargain. But the man hesitated and said, that might be my youngest daughter. She loves the she loves me best and always runs to meet me on my return home. The servant, however, was terrified and said, Why should your daughter be the very one to meet you? It might as easily be a cat or dog. Then the man allowed himself to be over persuaded, took the singing store in Lark, and promised to give the lion whatsoever should first meet him on his return home. When he reached home and entered his house, the first who met him was no other than his youngest and dearest daughter, who came running up and kissed and embraced him. And when she saw that he had brought with him a singing soaring lark, she was beside herself with joy. The father, however, could not rejoice, but began to weep and said, My dearest child, I have brought the bird, I brought the little bird dear in return for it, I have been obliged to promise thee to a savage lion, and when he has thee, he will tear thee in pieces and devour thee. And he told her all, just as, had happened, just as it had happened, and begged her not to go there. Come what might, but she consoled him and said, Dearest father, indeed your promise must be fulfilled. I will go thither and soften the lion, so that I may return to thee safely. Next morning, she had the road pointed out to her, and fearlessly out into the forest.
The lion, however, was an enchanted prince and was by day a lion and all his people were lions with him but in the night resumed their natural human shapes. On her arrival she was kindly received and led into the castle. When night came the lion turned into a handsome man and their wedding was celebrated with great magnificence. They lived happily together, remained awake at night and slept in the daytime. One day he came and said, Tomorrow there is a feast in thy father's house, because your oldest sister is to be married, and if thou art inclined to go there, my lion shall conduct thee. She said, Yes, I should very much like to see my father again, and went thither accompanied by the lions. There was great joy when she arrived, for they had all believed she had been torn in pieces by the lion, and had long ceased to live. But she told them what a handsome husband she had, and how well off she was, remained with them while the wedding feast lasted, and then went back again to the forest. When the second daughter was about to be married, she was again invited to the wedding. She said to the lion, This time I will not be alone. Thou must come with me. The lion, however, said that it was too dangerous for him, for if when there a ray from a burning candle fell upon him, he would be changed into a dove. and for seven years long would have to fly about with the doves. She said, Ah, but do come with me. I will take great care of thee and guard thee from all light. So they went away together and took with them their little child as well. She had a chamber built there so strong and thick that no ray could pierce through it. And in this he was to shut himself up when the candles were lit for the wedding feast. But the door was made of green wood, which walked and left a little crack, which no one noticed. The wedding was celebrated with magnificence. But when the procession with all its candles and torches came back from the church and passed by this apartment. A ray about the breadth of a hair fell on the king's son. And when this ray touched him, he was transformed in an instant. And when she came in and looked for him, she did not see him but a white dove was sitting there. The dove said to her, For seven years I must fly about the world, but at every seven step that you take, I will let fall a drop of red blood and a white feather, and these will show thee the way, and if thou followest the trace, thou canst release me. Thereupon the dove flew out the door, flew out at the door, and she followed him. And at every seven step, a red drop of blood and a little white feather fell down, and showered and showed her the way. So she went continually further and further, and in the wide world, in the wide world, never looking about her, 
or resting. And the seven years were almost past. Then she rejoiced and thought that they would soon be delivered. And yet they were so far from it. Once, when they were thus moving onwards, no little feather and no drop of blood fell, and when she raised her eyes, the dove had disappeared. As she thought to herself, In this no man can help thee, she climbed up to the sun and said to him, Thou shinest into, the, into every crevice and over every peak, hast thou not seen a white dove flying? No, said the sun, I have seen none, but I present thee with a casket, open it when thou art in sorest, ne sorest need. She then thanked the sun and went on until evening came, and the moon appeared. She then asked her, Thou shinest the whole night through, and on every field and forest, hast thou seen a white dove flying? No, said the moon, I have seen no dove, but here I give thee an egg, break it when thou art in, art in great need. She thanked the moon, and went on until the night wind came up and blew on her. Then she said to it, Thou blowest over every tree and under every leaf. Hast thou seen a white dove flying? No, said the night wind. I have seen none. But I will ask thee three other winds. Three other winds, perhaps they have seen it. The east wind and the west wind came, and they had seen nothing. But the south wind said, I have seen the white dove. It has flown to the red, yeah, the, the red Sea. Where it has become a lion again. For the seven year for the seven years are over and the lion is there fighting with a dragon. The dragon, however, is an enchanted princess. The night wind then said to her. I will advise thee, go to the Red Sea. On the right bank are some tall reeds. Count them, break off the eleventh, and strike the dragon with it. And then the lion will be able to subdue it, and both then will regain their human form. After that, look round, and thou wilt see a griffin, the, the, the griffin, which is by the Red Sea, swing thyself to thy beloved on the, onto this rock. And the bird will carry you over the sea to your own home. Here is a knot for thee, when thou art above the centre of the sea, let the knot fall, it will immediately shoot up and a tall nut tree will grow out of the water on which the griffin may rest. For if he cannot rest, he will not be strong enough to carry you across. And if thou forgettest to throw down the nut, he will let you fall into the sea. Then she went thither and found everything as the night wind had said. She counted the reeds by the sea, and cut off the eleventh, struck the dragon therewith, whereupon the lion overcame it, and immediately both of them regained their human shapes. But when the princess, who had before been the dragon, was delivered from enchantment, she took the youth by the arm, seated herself on the griffin, and carried him off with her. There stood the poor maiden, who had wandered so far, and was again forsaken. She sat down and cried, 
but at last she took her, she took courage and said, Still I will go as far as the wind blows, and as long as the cock crows, till I find him. And she went forth by long, long roads, until at last she came to the castle, where both of them were living together. There she heard that soon a feast was to be held, in which they could celebrate their wedding, but she said, God still helps me, and opened the casket that the sun had given her. A dress lay therein, as brilliant as the sun itself. She took it out and put it on, and went up to the castle, and everyone, even the bride herself, looked at her with astonishment. The dress pleased the bride so well that she thought it might do her for her wedding dress, and asked if it was for sale. Not for money or land, answered she, but for flesh and blood. The bride asked her what she meant by that, so she said, Let me sleep a night in the chamber where the bridegroom sleeps. The bride, not yet wanted very much, that would not yet want that, uh, would not, would not yet wanted very much to have the dress. At last she consented, but the page was to give the prince a sleeping draught. When it was night, therefore, and the youth was already asleep, she was led into the chamber. She seated herself on the bed and said, I have followed after thee for seven years. I have been to the sun and the moon and the four winds, and have inquired for thee, and have helped thee against the dragon. Wilt thou then quite forget me? But the prince slept so soundly that it only seemed to him as if the wind were whistling outside in the fir trees. When therefore day broke, she was led out again, and had to give up the golden dress. And as that even had been of no avail, she was sad. Went out into a meadow, sat down there, and wept. While she was sitting there, she thought of the egg which the moon had given her. She opened it, and there came out a clucking hen with twelve chickens all of gold. And they ran about chirping and crept in under the old hen's wings. Nothing more beautiful was ever seen in the world. Then she arose and drove them through the meadow before her, until the bride looked out of the window. The little chickens pleased her so much that she immediately came down and asked if they were for sale, not for money or land, but for flesh and blood. Let me sleep another night in the chamber where the bridegroom sleeps. The bride said, yes, intending to cheat her as on the former evening. But when the prince went to bed, he asked the page what the murmuring and rustling in the night had been. On this the page told all, that he had been forced to give him a sleeping draught, because a poor girl had slept secretly in the chamber, and that he was to give him another that night. The prince said, pour out the draught by the bedside. At night she was again led in, and when she began to relate how ill all have fared with her, she immediately recognised his beloved wife by her voice, sprang up and cried, Now I am released! Now I am released, I have been as were in a dream. 
as if we were in a dream. For the strange princess has bewitched me so that I have been compelled to forget thee. But God has delivered me from the spell at the right time. Then they both left the castle secretly in the night. For they feared father of the princess, the father of the princess who was a sorcerer. And they seated themselves on the griffin, which bore them across the Red Sea. And when they were in the midst of it, she left all the night. Immediately a tall nut tree grew up, whereon the bird rested, and then carried them home, where they found their child, who had grown tall and beautiful, and they lived thenceforth happily until their death. And that was the story of the singing soaring lark. Join me next time as I read The Goose Girl. Until then, good night and pleasant dreams.